Let me go to uh, Brenda. Brenda calling us in Alabama. Hey, Brenda. Hi, how are you, Dan? Good. Uh, you had spoken a couple weeks ago about people that were in the TSP program, maybe to contact their senators and see if the uh, first two loans had ever been paid back. Yes. So I, I contacted uh, Richard Shelby, and um, his, his aide called me and told me that they had not paid it back, but it was going to be one of the first things once their debt ceiling was raised. And, you know, he said, I know about your concerns, you know, and that's just a, a classic example of spending more than we have. And so I just wanted to call you and tell you that. I asked him if Jack Lou was going to borrow again, and he said that they had not gotten anything on that. So I'm going to contact Jack Lou's office. So. Okay, Brenda, I, uh, be before you go, let me just say this. I want to thank you for doing that because uh, you just gave me uh, confirmation of something that I wasn't 100% certain of. So I appreciate that. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to be uh, um, vigilant. And when the deficit ceiling is raised, so that's going to be sometime in September, in all likelihood, that deficit ceiling is going to get raised and put into place. I want you to wait a couple weeks, and I want you to call um, this aide for uh, Shelby's office and ask him the question, now that it's been raised, um, has that money come out and been put back in? Yeah, and let me, and, and would, that, yeah. And I, I want you to let me know. I want you to okay. let me know what he says. And sh should I continue to contribute to it? Because yes. we have a 5% match. Yes, continue to contribute to it. Continue to contribute to it. But uh, by the way, he said he wasn't sure about the Jack Lowe uh, uh, Low thing, you know, it, oh, it, I am sure of it. He may not be. Maybe he hasn't gotten wind of it yet. But the fact of the matter is, um, they are going to continue to take loans out of that. Jack Lowe said that um, probably a month ago, three, three weeks to a month ago. So that is going to continue to happen. And, you know, what, what they're doing, folks, for all of you, and I've got an awful lot of listeners, awful lot of listeners that are in the TSP program. And, and keep in mind, here's what's really aggravating. Now, any of you that work, and Brenda, thank you so much for calling me. I appreciate that, and I'll, I'll look forward to hearing back from you. Um, all those that are work for the Postal Service, I'm probably the only person on radio, TV, or any other news media in the country that defends the Postal Service because... I'm probably the only one that is willing to look into the numbers and find out what the real deal is. And I know that the Postal Service is the whipping post for the Congress and everybody else, which I think is pathetic. I think the Postal Service, uh, let, let me see some private organization deliver a letter from Philadelphia to Los Angeles in two days for whatever it is. I don't even know what a stamp costs, 45 cents or whatever it is. Um, but here's the thing. So the Postal Service, in particular, with the TSP program, here's why the Postal Service can't make any money, folks. I know you all think it's inefficiencies and, you know, the, they have too many people or we just don't need it or whatever. But the Postal Service is the only government agency in the world, in the country, that has to actually pay their retirement money like six months in advance. Six months. So they haven't taken it out of your pay yet. You haven't made your contributions yet. They haven't needed to make their match yet. But yet they've got to put it into the coffers of the TSP program so that the government can throw in that chest IOUs, two of them so far, because of the debt ceiling and never pay them back. And you'll wonder why the Postal Service, they don't have any cash flow. they got to use their money to pay in advance. Congress doesn't have to do it. No other federal government agency has to do it. The IRS workers, the EPA workers, the uh, entire Congress, those in the White House, in the DOJ or any other department, none of them have to do it. Just the Postal Service. Again, Again, and I only bring that up to say this because I say this all the time about all the issues that we have in our economy.
it's another failed government policy. The Postal Service is not a failed government entity. It's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the policies in and around the, what the Postal Service has to live up to from a management perspective is failed government policy. And if the day were to come when the Postal Service fails, you can blame Congress. Not the Postal Service, blame Congress. 888-589-8840. Let me go to Todd.